Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic? Let's do it. I find real people more creepy and eerie than the paranormal. What are some of your experiences with real life people? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. One night around 3 a.m., I was dead asleep with my ex-boyfriend next to me. All of a sudden, I hear someone in my house asking if anyone was home. I woke up my ex and told him to go see what the hell was going on. He was a total chicken shit and made me go. I get out of bed, can't find my glasses, but the guy's still shouting. I come out of my bedroom in my pajamas and see there's a big bald dude in what looks to be a police uniform standing in my entryway. I'm squinting, trying to get a look at him, and he looks at me and says, I just wanted to tell you that your door was left unlocked and you should lock it. I mumble something to the effect of, uh, thanks, and he leaves my apartment. I'm still as blind as a bat, but I see that he walks away instead of getting into a car. No policeman would be policing the woodsy area I live in on foot. The next day I called the local police station and asked if any officers had reported this incident and they said they would check with the on-duty officers and get back to me. They called me the next day and said no one had done this. I still get freaked out when I think about this happening, and I wish I knew what that guy was up to. Here's a very creepy thing that happens to me. One winter, I was pushing crazy tents with a fireplace. The limits part was just the fact that I was solo and pretty remote in these places. This was rural southwest Colorado canyon country. There wasn't that much snow at all on the ground, but it was zero degrees Fahrenheit that night. Well, it was a full moon and I was restless, so at about 2 a.m. I got up out of my tent, fire still going, and went for a long walk. I ended up climbing up some stuff that was probably a quarter or half a mile from my tent or vehicle, but up above it so I could see down on my tent and campsite clearly. It was really beautiful down there, dimly lit from the inside by the stove's fire, dimly lit from the outside by the big moon. I was enjoying myself and just about to head back down when I heard the distant gravel crunching. I'd been there since noon that day and not a single vehicle had driven past, so I was kind of put off and decided to stay up there until they drove past. The noise grows louder. Amazing how far away you can hear in the canyons at night. Slowly and eventually, I can see that it is a car on the same road, so I stay put and watch. It's going really slow. I can see a lighter being used quite a bit, if I'm not saying they were smoking meth, but they were smoking meth. And it's something like 89 Caprice or something. Like the old cop cars and really crappy. So I'm just watching still in a very wistful mood and feeling somewhat powerful from my perch. They near the bend where they'll be able to see my tent and round the corner. Brake lights. They slow way down and seem to pause at my tent for an eternity. Probably only a minute or so, but now I was on high alert and pretty nerve-wracking. I had no kind of anything weapon-wise on me just a hatchet down by the tent for firewood. But they drive on. I'm pretty relieved, but still shaken, now thinking about what if they come back. So I decide to chill for a little longer and make sure I see them exit. Nope. They turn around down the road and come back. I watched as they parked a ways down the road and got out and started walking down the road toward my camp. It was such a bright moonlight, which slick roads all around, that I could see this all happening somewhat clearly, but I couldn't make out much more than the basic senses, and there were still lots of big shadows. I proceeded to watch for quite a while as they approached my tent, look around all the outside, look in the vents, where it probably looked like I was sleeping, the bag was in there with bedding, mess with my vehicle, and then walk back to their car and leave. I pretty much stayed up there until just before dawn, 
and only came down when I knew I could break camp and bail. There were footprints in the snow on the outside of my tent, and I kept imagining what it would have been like to have just woken up and not known what happened, just see the footprints. After that, I started carrying A, a spot locator beacon, B, battery-powered motion detector alarm, and C, a shotgun. And I started using a much smaller tent, and sometimes I even camp in a bivy 20 or 30 feet away from my tent and just put my pack in the tent. This way, if someone starts messing with the honeypot, I have enough to get some awareness and do the right thing. TL, DR, potential serial murderers pass me by. As a solo hiker and occasional camper myself, uh, this really resonates. You're out there, you're pretty exposed. I mean, you can be prepared and you can be tough, but, you know, it's, it's a kind of respect you take with nature and solitude. But if someone has nefarious goals, it could be a dangerous situation. Looked out. I once lived in a sort of bad neighborhood in a very tiny house with my brother, who was rarely there. Old house, so it was a little creepy and also felt like anyone who wanted to could have broken in. One night I was getting ready for bed. It was pretty late and during a hot summer. We didn't have AC, so I had one of those two-fan window deals. The blinds were pulled down to the top of the fan. I was changing for bed. I sleep in underwear and a t-shirt. I slipped out of my pants and changed my shirt. I don't wear a bra to bed because that. I'm about to hop into bed when I hear a low masculine voice say, Let's see those titties again. I think my whole body stopped working for five seconds while I absorbed the fact that there was a creepy peeping Tom right outside my window and I was alone in a house that he could have get into if he wanted. It was the first and only time I called 911. I had a panic attack waiting for the police and the very nice 911 lady had to calm me down. Bright note, apparently it was a slow night because they sent three cars. I was so happy when I moved. I work in a Middle Eastern grocery store in one of the reddest states. When my son was an infant, I would take him with me to work most days. We get a lot of soldiers that have spent time overseas looking for some of the good food they have there. One day, the soldier comes in and he's just as nice as can be. Then he sees my son and he starts talking to him in a cutesy baby voice saying how cute he is. Then, out of nowhere, and in the same cutesy voice, he says to my son, Oh, you're so cute. I just want to gouge your little eyes out. It caught me way off guard. I just laughed nervously and picked my son up and walked in the back. When I was 17, my friend and I were walking down the street near the house at about 1 a.m. We lived in a dense neighborhood dominated by three Decker houses. We came around a corner to see this huge bull-sized man on his knees over a woman. He was furiously smashing her head into the concrete sidewalk. When I say this guy was a bull-sized, I mean, he was not fat. His muscles had muscles, and they were bulging. He reminded me of the Hulk, only he was not green. He was red. Red as if he were in heat stroke. We screamed at him right away. He looked up, and I'll never forget that face. There was snot pouring out of his nose. Long strands of it hung all the way down to the woman's head. His eyes were bright white, crazed, wide, and far too circular. His face expressed a murderous fury I've never seen before and hope I never see again. He lifted the woman's head by the hair and with a loud crack, spiked it into the cement like a football and screamed, You want some of this, huh? I had not seen my friend pick up the rock he had, but he threw it at the guy's snarling face. He hit him right in the nose. It was a big-ass rock, but it did not even phase the guy. The guy lunged at my friend, who took off running. The guy took off chasing my friend. I knew there was no way a guy that size would be able to catch up to my buddy, who was a track and field athlete. I ran to the woman. Her hair was completely matted and dark red blood was gushing from her huge deep gash across her forehead. I could not believe she was not unconscious. I tried to tell her I was here to help and she became combative. She started punching me, 
screaming to leave her man alone. I was afraid that her screaming would bring the monster back to us. With that thought, I said this to myself, and I grabbed her wrists and dragged her to the nearest door and started pounding on it. This time, it was me screaming, open the f up. I was scared shitless that this guy would be back before I got to someone safe. Two men opened the door and pretty much freaked out when they saw that I was restraining a small woman covered in blood. I think they were about to take me out, but I screamed, call the police, call an ambulance. I told them that we needed to get in before he comes back. I told them he will come back. We quickly dragged the woman into the hallway, shut and locked the door. One of the guys called the police and they showed up in what seemed like seconds. An ambulance arrived soon after. My buddy, seeing the lights of the squad cars, returned to the scene. He outran the guy and got to a store and had the clerk call the police. So I guess they were already on the way before we made the call. The police had a lot of questions, of course. We had no idea who the guy was. We never saw him or the woman before. In the end, the police gave us a card and said, if we see this guy again, call 911 right away. Just like I would even hesitate. The next day, the events of the night before were in the paper. I read the article sitting on my porch. It said that the woman was in critical condition. It mentioned that the woman and my name as well as my buddies. It was also said that the man was yet to be identified and was yet to be apprehended. Here is the part that really messed with my head. The place where the happened was one block away from my porch. I looked up and could see the spot where he was smashing her head. I remember thinking that is still out there and looking down at the paper, he knows my name. Two weeks later, I turned 18 and I was on a plane to boot camp. This guy scared me that much. I have two. When I was around 12, a neighbor had a party where I met a girl my age. My mom was happy to see me making friends, so we headed to my house to play games. My dog was a sweet lab who had never been angry or growled ever. This girl walks up to him to pet him, and he immediately growls and barks, and eventually cowers close to me. I couldn't believe it, but even by 12, I believe you don't just ignore a dog's intuition. So I take note of the sign, but we go play and then go for a walk. Not 10 minutes into the conversation, and this girl is an obvious sociopath. I realized what I and the dog had felt about her. She was empty and fake, in a very visceral way. She starts talking about R, not in a maybe she was abused way, in a doesn't that sound interesting, but how do the logistics work kind of way. She specifically wondered how you are, are someone while holding a knife to their neck. Her parents invited me to spend the night at her house. I declined. This is going to make me come off as a bit insane, and I don't deny it one bit. When I look at people, they have colors that sort of surround them, I guess. There aren't really colors I can give names to either. My mom is mom colored, and so on. The colors seem to have a lot to do with what type of person someone is. They have been very reliable in that way, so maybe it's my own brain's prejudices, but sometimes I see someone who I just ran to run away from because their color is just so sickening. My ex's dad was one of those people. He made me physically ill, and he was an awful excuse for a human being. And animals seem to be on the same page as me. I haven't seen a dog in the world that won't raise his hackles at my little brother. And he recently threatened someone at knife point at the ripe old age of 17. Crazy stuff. I'm a DJ in a local bar. Met many, many weird and wonderful people in my time, but one stands out in particular. Her name is Alice, and she lives in her own wonderland 24-7. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure she's harmless. She always is happy and dances like she's auditioning for a new workout DVD, but she's the kind of person you don't want to make eye contact with. Creepiest moment with Alice had to be the one night I was working, had the headphones on, doing what I'd do, 
and was aware of someone standing to the right of me, not dancing. Instantly, I got the feeling that you get when you know someone is staring at you, you just have to look back. So I did. What I saw was Alice, staring right at me with the strangest smile on her face. I say smile, but it wasn't a nice look. Teeth and gums in full view, with a crazy look in the eyes. What the f was my initial reaction? Stuck the headphones on again and continued what I was doing. And Alice continued what she was doing too. After a good couple of minutes, I removed the headphones and asked, Anything in particular I can help you with? You want a request plate or something? Her reply will stay with me for the rest of my life. No, I'm good. Just showing you my teeth. I almost got aured while walking through a park a few years ago. I lived by this large park, which is actually super nice during the day, but has a reputation for a lot of drug use and sex in the bushes at night. I lived about a block away, and it was much faster to cut through the park. Despite the reputation, the drug users kept to themselves, and the park hookup people are so worried about getting busted that you don't really even notice them unless you specifically wanted into their bushes looking for a hookup. And I was a pretty well-built 23-year-old dude, so I was never really worried about walking through there at night. Anyway, I had a really stressful day, so I was just kind of meandering through the park at the end of sunset, just smoking and thinking about shit, and I walked through this heavily wooded path that I wouldn't normally have gone on. But I was just kind of wandering aimlessly and not paying too much attention. There's this really creepy bathrooms that are closed down about halfway down the trail, and as I approach them, this guy who looks to be in his 50s approaches me and asks me to his dick. I am in no mood to be off a random 50-year-old at the park, so I politely decline. I'm not super nervous at this point because I'd been approached in similar fashion many times. I say no and then asks if he can ask my D, to which I also say no. I start to walk off and then this dude grabs me from behind and starts saying how he is going to have me no matter what it takes and unzips his pants and starts trying to reach down mine and take them off. Thank God I had the presence of mind and the physical strength to break free. I tore ass out of there as he's chasing after me. Thank God he was fat and out of shape. And luckily, when I got to the main parking lot, there was a cop patrolling. So I informed him what went down and then started running again and didn't stop until I was home with my door locked. Granted, it's not as creepy or ominous as some of the I noticed someone watching me through my bedroom window stories in here, but attempted R is pretty damn scary. And just to cut anyone off before they decide to chip in their two cents, yes, it was a pretty stupid decision in hindsight to take a dark shortcut through a park, and I definitely learned my lesson after that one. You just generally don't think about R if you're a guy. I was sitting at a bus stop next to an older man in rumpled slacks and a white dress shirt. I had seen him a few times before because we took a similar route. I rode one bus in particular that he was usually on to get to some summer classes that I was taking at the local public college. He'd made eye contact on occasion and said things like, you look very nice or your hair is very pretty today. I honestly thought he was a very sweet old man being harmless and friendly and it made my afternoon a couple times. On this particular day, my bus was nowhere to be seen and I'd been sitting there next to him for several minutes. All we'd said to each other was hi, so I started a conversation with him. Immediately, he began telling me about his experiences in Vietnam War, and it became readily apparent that he was very mentally disturbed. He claimed that he heard God's voice telling him, Moses, I call you to this war to atone for your people, and that he immediately enlisted but not before Night of Passion with his then-girlfriend, who he described as a Chinese hippie. He then went on to describe in very explicit detail the physical characteristics of the various Vietnamese women he had sex with over the course of the war, and then about his girlfriend of varied Asian descent when he returned from the war. The universal defining characteristic that he never failed to mention was long black hair. Long black hair, while pointing at my head, immediately followed by long black hair while pointing at my crotch. 
I'm a 90 pound Asian female who was at the time wearing a sundress and carrying a bag of cookies I had just purchased. I gave him a cookie and got on the first bus that came by. We were alone at that stop for maybe 45 minutes.